I'm sipping, sipping, sipping in slippers. I'm feeling, I'm feeling so fine. There's nothing, no nothing, no there's nothing better than drinking a fine glass of wine. So put on your slippers and pour me some wine. Red, white, or rose, they will have a good time. And maybe a Chianti or a nice Chardonnay. How about a Merlot or a Chicky Bonnier? Italian or French or Rioja from Spain? Six bottles later and it all tastes the same. And it might taste turkey and it can taste cherry. And it can sometimes taste like a strawberry. So cap break and capsule in a long taxi home. Wrong turn at Tuscany and ended up at Rome. So take off your slippers and put down the glass. Just drink from the bottle cause you're drunk off your butt. Sipping, sipping, sipping and suppers. I'm feeling, I'm feeling so fine. There's nothing, ain't nothing, no, there's nothing better than drinking a fine glass of wine. Hello, this is Sneaky Sip, and you need to know that, for the record, most of the information in this episode is incorrect. This is our first episode, so as you will see, they don't even have the right slippers on. Some info is right, some's wrong, but I think it's because Oversip and Original Sip were a little sipsy from too many bubbles. So just so you know, the sparkling and brutes in this review today are from BC Canada, a Tantalus Sparkling Natural Brute, another one from BC, a Summer Hell of Sipes Brute, named Sparkling Wine of the Year for 2014, an All-Canadian Wine Championships from the Great Napa Valley, a Shandon Brute Sparkling Wine as well. But to be clear, they were not drunk, because as the great Dean Martin would say, you're not drunk if you can lie on the floor without holding on. And I also have been sneaking a glass or two from them as they go, but they'll never know. So here we go, episode one. We promise it'll get better with time, just like a good wine. Yeah. Good afternoon. This is the first episode of Sipping with Slippers. How to enjoy and review wine in the comfort of your own home and bar. And of course, in your favorite pair of slippers. And as you can tell from our slippers today, we're going to be reviewing some... These are man's feet and your slippers. <laughs> some sparkling wines. Very sparkly slippers for very sparkly wines. The red wines. slippers are technically a man's feet. These are small <laughs> slippers. The first thing to note is not all sparkling wine is champagne. Not anything that is sparkling and bubbly is champagne. There's sparkling wines and champagne. And champagne beer. is a region in France. That's why it is champagne. So it's strictly... Strictly from that place that it is champagne. Everywhere else is just strictly a sparkling wine. So we're going to show you the proper way how to open a bottle of sparkling so that you don't need a towel. We've got these two sparklings. Yes. Which our feet can show off. <laughs> we have a nice brew from Summerhill and we have a nice tantalus sparkling wine. And so we're going to tantalize you with yeah. some lovely bubbly. <laughs> and. Second. <laughs> and show you that wine and slippers do actually pair very well together. So the first thing on the agenda is how to open a bottle of sparkling. So number one is the angle. It needs to be a 30 to 45 degree angle for opening a bottle of wine. So the first thing is remove the foil and loosen the wire cage. Do not remove the wire cage. There you go. So That's now you're going you're gonna to you're gonna turn the wire and it usually takes about six twists. Let's see if it is. One, two, three, four, five, six. Perfect. That's removed. Okay, now it's removed. Now you're going to turn the bottle, not the cork, gently on a 45 so, degree angle. This guy hold the bottle. And you should just hear a light hand. pop. You don't need a towel if it's done properly. Please don't get me in the face. <laughs> there you go. Perfect. That is a perfect way, almost perfect. Yeah, a almost little a little a little spilly. Almost perfect. I think it's the heat. And now we're gonna pour it into a champagne flute. And again, this first wine that we're tasting. This is the Summerhill Jeepes brew. Which is very similar to a champagne. If you don't if you order a champagne and they don't have it, a brew is very, very good replacement. Well this will be mine because it's a little sloppier, so <laughs> <laughs> Cheers! Cheers! Mmm! <laughs> Nothing better than bubbles. So what do you taste in this one? It tastes a little bit of honey in there. A little bit of honey. Um, just a little bit of that buttery smell that comes with hoking. So it's got a bit of that. Very light. 
the thing with sparkling is you uh, you don't need to do any of that. You definitely don't want to do any swirling. Swirling or no. any of that madness. You no can just drink swirling. it right out of the gate. No, no swirling. No, you it's strictly do that just for a full drink body, full it. You just drink wine. that wine. Yeah. As soon as it's poured, it's ready to go. So the bubbles will do all the work for you. But it does need to be in a flute glass so you get all that concentrated flavor. You don't want to pour bubbly into uh, one of those large wine glasses. It makes it look ridiculous for one. And two, it's just nicer and a little classier when you drink it out of these. So, so just to explain sparkling wines and champagne, they're wines where the bubbles um, of carbon dioxide gas have been trapped in the actual wine. So that's really oh. how it's created. And what makes it different from a red or a white it's just really the carbon dioxide. I already need more. How would you rate this? A um, scale of 1 to 10 excellent. 1 to 10 excellent? I would definitely rate this at least a 7. I would actually say it's an 8. I would go with a 7 because I drink a lot, so... The sunshine is making <laughs> me feel it's a definite 8. <laughs> Cheers! Cheers. And we'll soon go on to our next bottle. Damn, those nice feet. Even for man feet and the little pink slippers, good looking feet. Mmm. Alright, so we're going to open the next bottle. Uh, this is our Tantalus. It, it, is, it is also delicious. And you know what? Uh, not to give you an infomercial, and we're not paid for this, but we actually really love it. Well, we could be paid for this. Maybe and down the road. If someone wants to pay us for this, yeah. that's not going to hurt. Yeah, but we're, we're not going to say no. But we're big fans of Okanagan wine. We go just there quite often. Just say intense. Come our way. That's a bit of a messy opening. I got to say, I took all the nice tinfoil off, and now it looks much prettier. Oh, one, two, three. Four, five, oh six. I gotta keep up with that. It's always six. <gasps> oh. oh! That was so improper. That was so improper. So that's what you want to not do. Yeah, there's a there's This a is don't. a simple not do. Uh, if you yeah. get too excited and you go for that seven, <laughs> um, you're out. Yeah, that, that's a don't. The wine strikes in baseball are seven strikes and you're out. Yeah, that's a don't. Background on Tantalus. It's uh, again in the Okanagan Valley. Very Bay. delicious. Uh, let's let's do a little pour. Let's at least while we up the you know the you need opening. To read the label. Um, it's Tantalus. It's uh, Old Vin Riesling, natural brew. Again. And it's BCVQA. Yeah, and again that's a replacement. Twenty twelve actually. For a, nice uh, one. a champagne. It's and a little bit older. It's a little yeah. bit nice. Tantalus. Uh, based on what they say, was established in 2004 in Okanagan Valley. So this will be a key factor of if you open the wine incorrectly, you're going to get a lot more head than you wanted. And uh, uh, that's what's going to happen with that. You're going to get a lot more bubbles than you originally anticipated with the pouring. So that's know. the main reason for opening this properly. Not like a just It was originally known as Pioneer Vineyards, uh, and the site was first planted to table grapes in 1927 by renowned local horticulturist J.W. Hughes. Now, cheers! Cheers. This, this, come on, this is this low down cheers. This, this is an excellent bubbly. I'm feeling very excited about this one. I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. Mm. Yeah, it's good. Again, I, I, uh, I really appreciate it. Scale of 1 to 10, excellent. See, I'm going to give this one definitely the 8. And I'm going to give it a sure. 7. Really, you like this one last, less than the uh, the G paper. No, I'm just being different. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just being opinionated. All right, but, fine. But my I, do like, I do like this more. I find it's lighter. It's not as sweet. It's, uh, it's, it's got the right amount of citrus in it. Yeah, I, I find so it's, it's not as sweet. So it's very light and nice and uh, very summery. Maybe I'm just too hot right now. So that's why I'm really enjoying it, is because this is kind of like having a nice bubbly orange juice. Even without the orange juice, I feel like this is uh, still still citrusy enough. It's like a mimosa without the orange juice. The biggest right things to note is that you don't have to spend a fortune on a sparkling wine or a champagne or a brew. Just to have it, you can buy a great bottle for $20-$30. Well, the real 20, thing is, yeah, especially with champagne, everyone's <laughs> going for champagne. Champagne is from a specific region, so you don't need to actually spend the money on that champagne. Sparkling wine exists everywhere in the world in lots of different regions. And I mean, a brew from Italy or oh, especially Italy, or even Canada, even the BCQA uh, Tantalus right here, 
and it can be just as delicious as some of those sparkling wines you've had from other wineries. And speaking of other wineries, we were lucky enough to just be in the Napa Valley uh, two months ago, and we visited yep. Shandon Winery and tried all their sparkling reserves. We had to have them all because <coughs> they, were they were absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> and we can't open one of those because we drank them all. We uh, did drink them all. We did try to save some. That was the intention was we would save these wines for and the we first would open episode. Them. But and we would do, we would start with, you know, cultured wines that we couldn't just buy at a liquor store, but, but it was unfortunately, too it was two months ago, and we did drink all that wine. That's how good it is. You're not going to be able to not drink it for at least, you know, a week. You're, you're done. So. so, so far in this episode, we've showed you how to sort of open a bottle of sparkling, how not to open As I said, sparkling. don't get overzealous and go for that <laughs> seven. You go for six only. Six only. Then you grab that cork. You gotta, you gotta maintain that right away. Otherwise, it's gonna get out of hand, and you're gonna spill, and then everything has too much head. So this first episode is just, you know, a learning curve for us, a learning curve for you. We're all, you know, newbies in the wine industry, but we're very much wine lovers. We have very nice slippers, though. And I gotta say, the only thing that is 100% working is these slippers. I refuse to believe that I could get better looking slippers on a man's feet than these, these red. Delicious so, bow tie things. So, course, so now we're going to close wine dog. with something that we think we're going to do for every episode is based on how the wine makes us feel, how we're going to dance. Some sort of dancing. Some sort of dancing based, Wild on, dancing based on how excited we were about the wine. So with no further ado. Apparently dancing. Sipping, sipping, sipping and suppers. I'm feeling, I'm feeling so fine. There's nothing, ain't nothing, no, there's nothing better than drinking a fine glass of wine.